essence of life. The essence of life is Thank you, William, and thank you to my fellow Toastmasters. Billions and billions of years ago, our universe was one giant chunk of mass that was surrounded by absolutely nothing. Then one day, something happened. There was an explosion, and this ball of mass became many, many tiny balls of mass and they were sent on a continuing course of outward expansion. Our universe is a dynamic place. It's always changing. It's always changing in ways that we're not even aware of and probably not even conscious of. But we are, in fact, inhabitants of this universe, and we're also part of it. And therefore, the ability to change is inherent within each and all of us. And that's an important thing. Albert Einstein was a guy who you could probably say understood the universe pretty good for a mere mortal. He said that doing the same thing over and over again is a definition of insanity. So change is important. But sometimes it's a negative event that triggers change within us. Like, for example, maybe you got laid off from your job, and that's a real tough pill to swallow. But, you know, when the initial shock passed, you gave, you gave your old employer the middle finger. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, you started that business of your dreams. Or maybe you took time to go to the other, other part of the world and see some old distant relatives. You know, I bet a lot of people here have joined this club because they had a bad experience, maybe with public speaking. Maybe you had to make a presentation at work, for example, and all you, re you, you, you just hit so many blanks. You saw all these beady little eyes looking at you, and you just forgot everything that you were going to say. And you were so embarrassed, you're like, I'm never going to let that happen to me again. I'm going to join Toastmasters. <laughs> and then, so I would have to say, personally, for myself speaking, joining Toastmasters is one of the top three things that I've ever done in my life. And if, if you're curious, I'd probably say the other two is taking a teaspoon of fish oil daily and flossing my teeth every night. <laughs> <laughs> So let me give you a little story, really quick. This, uh, this guy I know, his name was Irving, but all his friends called him Magic. Maybe some of you have heard of him, Irvin Magic Johnson. He played basketball, and arguably, he's one of the best to have ever played the game. But there's no doubt that he is the most versatile to have ever played the game. At about 6'9", which is pretty tall, taller than anyone here, I think. He could probably play any position on the court. That would means point guard, which is usually played by a smaller guy or like center. There'll never be a player like that again. But unfortunately, his career was cut short in his prime. He contracted HIV. When he contracted this disease, very little was known about it. People thought, oh, he has only a few more years to live. And like all the other guys in the NBA, at least most of them, were like, I don't want to be in like the same room with this guy. He's full of diseases, and I'm going to catch something from him. So even though he probably had a few more years left in him, he was forced to retire early, which was sad. But, as you can imagine, Magic Johnson, you know, he's been playing the game since he was young. Like, this was his life. This was his whole identity. So he's putting that, so he has to put a big part of his life behind him and just reinvent himself. But life gave him lemons, and he made lemonade. And one could say that, arguably, 
he has been more successful after after he gave up basketball as opposed to his whole career. And that is, that's saying a lot because, as I said earlier, he's one of the top, definitely one of the top players ever to step on that court. But, so, basically, what he's, since he retired, uh, he's become the face of the AIDS virus. He's not only lived, but he's thrived. He was supposed to die a few years after. He's still alive today, but he's, he's shown us that we can still live a solid life of course, he owns a line of businesses, including some movie theaters. He's a motivational speaker. Uh, he's gotten involved in politics and philanthropy. And I actually just recently heard he's looking at buying the L.A. Dodgers. So I'd like to uh, wrap up. Like, as probably, if you watch the news, you'll notice this change has taken place everywhere. Like, for example, you see economies are collapsing, regimes are being overthrown, it all looks like bad stuff. And honestly, none of us have any control over that. But we do have control over ourselves, and we can always make the best out of a bad situation. And no matter how bad things get, I personally like this quote by Nietzsche, even if it is a little bit cynical, that which doesn't kill us will, always, will only make us stronger. Thank you very much.